Good morning, Code Simplifier Tribes. Bez is here from Code Simplifier Coding School. Today, we are going to learn how to validate a phone number entered by a client in our CH project. To refresh your memory, let's recap what we have done in our last videos. We started our iteration by checking for the customer or client's name section to be blank or not. If that was the case, we created this error message and will be shown to the customer. Also, in the iteration statement, we checked if the name contains letters only or not. And the proper error message will be shown if the name doesn't contain letters only. In today's video, we want to apply the same principle for the phone number. We want to check if the section is blank as well as checking if it contains numbers only. With no further talk, let's get it started below our last else if statement we want to write down our comment and the condition so so we have another else if statement what are we going to check is going to check if the phone number section is blank or not so it will be string is null or empty and within the parentheses, we are going to check the customer phone box. Yep, customer phone box. And we convert it to text. And here we have our conditions. Within the condition, it will be exactly the same thing we've done for our customer name box. We need to create an error message. And we need our message dia dialog. To create the error message within the parentheses we want to write down the phone number section cannot be blank once we created our error message we are going to show it on the screen so it will be await error customer error message dot show a sync so that will show the, our error message as a pop-up message on the screen. Then we have the, our customer phone box dot focus. Within the parentheses, we have focus state. And programmatic semicolon. Then lastly, we have a return. So the return jumps out of the, our statement. Let's run our application and ensure we are on the right track. Here we enter our name to just avoid any error message. We're just going to the customer phone number and leave it blank. So you press calculate. Here is the error message shows up successfully. So the phone number or the string you see here is where it came from creating our error message. And this actual window you see on our screen is where the await comes handy. And when we are going to close the message, the focus goes back to the customer phone and that is where the focus statement comes handy. Next, we want to check if the customer phone numbers contains numbers only or not. Let's minimize this code and below our else if statement, we need another else if statement to check if the customer phone numbers contains letters or not. So here we have a regex dot is match within the parentheses what are we going to check and that is a customer phone box convert it to text and here we have comma and here is where the condition we are going to write it that you have add sign double quotation mark the diamond icon on uh, number six on your keyboard open and close the square brackets and we have zero to nine. So I will write it down, then I will explain what I am doing. So we have 10 here, and then we have the dollar sign, end of the line. And one thing we need to remember is before the red X, we are going to have the explanation mark to convert it to not if this condition does not match. So we have open and close square brackets. And here is where our code goes. So let's let's see what we've done. So we got our customer phone number, customer phone box number from our application. Whatever the 
client or the customer is going to enter, we are going to match it with this condition. So what is this? So the zero to nine is we are going to check if whatever in input is contains zero digits up to number nine only or not. So that means if we are going to enter a letter, technically we should have the error message. And the 10 variable you see here is the length of the phone number. So if the phone number is less than 10 digits or over 10 digits or contains something out of the, our uh, numbers branch, we should have the error message. Here we are going to write down the condition. So we have a variable, we have an error message equals to new message dialog. What are we going to check? The phone number must contain numbers only. Now, the error message is created. We want to show it on a screen. So we have a wait, we call our variable, and we have the show a sync. We want to set the focus back to the phone number section. So we have our customer phone box dot focus. Within the parentheses, we have the focus state. If I can type it right, dot programmatic. And here we need to select whatever the customer entered as their phone number. So we have our customer phone box dot select everything to modify it and then we are going to jump out of the condition save the work we will restart our application to see what the outcome is look like so I entered my name here I want to write down a phone number does not contain digits only so calculate the error message shows up the phone number must contains numbers only and when we close it, you see whatever we enter is been selected to modify it. Now we have to write down one, two, three, four, five. Here, after entering the number, we are getting the same error message, which says the number must contains numbers only. To increase the customer satisfaction of your application, here because basically the customer entered the number and we, they still get the same error message, and that doesn't make sense. So we could avoid that by going back to our application. And here is we going to add another message or 10 digits so in that case the customer knows that the phone number cannot be blank and the phone number has to be 10 digits or more so let's restart our application we write down the name and here we have one two three four calculate so the phone number must contains numbers only or 10 digits so you close one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and calculate. So we don't get error, any error message anymore because we haven't continued our condition yet. So that brings us to the end of today's video. Before we finish today's video, I would like to ask for a favor from you. If you are new here and haven't subscribed to our channel yet, could you please subscribe and support our work? By subscribing to our channel, you are giving us confidence to create more educational videos like what you saw today and share them with others. Also, if the content served you well, could you please like the video and help its visibility on YouTube's channel? Your support means the world to us. Until the next video, I wish you all the best and see you later.